there are wings which uh, look like free, uh, liberated, uh, by which the meditation plays a role mm. as a sadhana. So, uh, uh, I understood also that meditation was necessary in order to see that it does not work by most of them. <coughs> um, but not by all, so I did not, you know what I mean. I, I, I um, um, by Zen masters, for example, there was this so extreme sadhana and and then and then um, as a result something is out there is seeing recognizing I cannot get it for this and this giving up uh, is the is the liberation. So you, yeah. the only thing is good. Uh, I am not against meditation, I am not against yoga. Yeah, yeah. Everything is good. Uh, but you have to go away from that. So for the time being, as a foundation, as a preparation, everything is good. Everything is beautiful. So after us, some samadhi state, some meditative state, some energy field, everything may happen. Let it happen. But we should not uh, have any concern over that. Yeah. We should not have any effort over that. Everything must be natural. Uh, that is, uh, for example, the some there are some uh, water channel maybe there in our uh, in our house uh, for some waste water we have some channel for the flowing of water then the water may flow in the channel and if you block the flowing water by your hand for time certain time the flowing water will accumulate so after the accumulation of water if you remove the hand the water will have some force. So if you do not have the block, the water will not have some force. The natural flow will be there. But if you have, if you artificially create some block in the flowing water, the accumulated water will get a force when you remove the hand. So in this way, the, our meditation will create some, some artificial flow some artificial flow in our liberation. So thereby we can understand some uh, some taste, what is the nature of liberation. We can feel say, like this. But at the same time, we need not always uh, this kind of, we need not go to the use of artificial liberation. So the natural liberation is enough. Yeah. Then the, because of the very nature of our mind is in the liberation, because only because of our uh, misunderstanding, we are struggling. <coughs> we are doing some disturbance. We are causing some disturbance. Mm. Yes, yes. In past, I am, uh, uh, for me, it was like equal meditation, equal liberation. So this I did not understand previously. So now I am more clear about it. I'd like to continue on with her. her oh, okay, okay. Because. You hear so many teachers, and you're, you're one of them, who said, I did 40 years of practice, hard sadhana, I did 30 years, I did 50 years of sadhana, and then I just said, forget it, mm -hmm. and I gave up. Yeah. And I think this is what happened to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had it finished, <laughs> gave up. And so every teacher who's in that situation, and there's many, say that the meditation, there was no relationship between mm -hmm. the meditation and the liberation yeah. itself. And yet, they all did their 30 years, their 40 years, their 50 years before they gave up. So it seems, even though it may not be a cause and effect, it seems there is something that looks like a cause and effect there, that I did it and I got fed up and I gave up. So, and, and, and we have to see this for ourselves, in a sense, that we, that we just give up. So, is that meditation of any value, or that hard, long sadhana of any value to get us to the point of giving up? Or is it of absolutely no value whatsoever? 
whatsoever, because it seems there's a relationship. But the main reason for the meditation is that, so we, we take a different kind of lifestyle, because otherwise we'll have the different kind of lifestyle, using liquors or drugs or anything to set ourselves in. But we are in a different uh, line. We are prepare ourselves and we have a disciplined life. So everything, for many things, it is helpful. But the, the only wrong thing is that we are relying the meditation for our eternal salvation. Mm -hmm. that, it will, that alone it will not give. <laughs> but the other thing, but, uh, it, it, gives, uh, it gives us more than 50% help. <laughs> so the, the final help alone it cannot give. So the right. meditation cannot give us the final help. For that we have to take, uh, we have to take away from that, take ourselves away from the meditation. Hey, I think what is a yeah. very good point he's saying. Mm -hmm. Every teacher, all the greatest masters have done a lot of meditation. Yeah. 50 years, 30 years, 40 years they do. And then they attain some state of liberation for whatever reason. And then many teachers will say, look, actually that's not necessary. Liberation is free flowing, it's natural, it's sad, it's, mm -hmm. it's natural. Don't, don't bother with that. Mm -hmm. But they have all, without exception, have put in that 30 years of time or 20 years of time. They have all been seeking mm -hmm. for 20 years before they say, you don't need to seek. I don't need to seek. So the question he's asking is, is that work of 20 years, is that preparatory work? Is it as yeah. you're preparing to come to a point where I say, no, I don't need. No. That if you have to go through that to come to a point where you say, actually now I don't need or we don't need it. That is his question. But, uh, Am I right? Yeah, yeah. But everybody, everybody is needed. This work is needed. Yoga is necessary. Meditation is necessary. Preliminary, say, say, preliminary work, this is a must. Without this, we cannot be there. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you must be in a, a torturing problem. For the, if, if anybody is in torture of his problem, even if he is in the agony, whether he is in seriously in psychological problem, and that person did not have this uh, preparatory work. Right. They can directly come to the realization. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, as an ordinary person, uh, this is the ordinary way. That's the yeah. natural way. We have to go through meditation, doing practice, doing many sadhanas, everything necessary, everything is useful. Yeah, because it, it gets quite clear over a period of time that it can't be the result of effort. Yeah. It can't be the result of effort. That's very clear because that's a movement of mind. So it's fine, it's mind, mm -hmm. it's all of that. But it seems that the effort has to be done to come to that understanding that I have to stop it. Or, so, or we talk with someone like you who says, hey, you don't need it because of this, 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 this. Mm -hmm. And then we contemplate it and maybe see for ourselves mm -hmm. in that moment. And then, we, then we're aware of the liberated state. Mm -hmm. But even that's rare. That's right. But in my case also, I also have the idea that liberation and enlightenment is keep myself always in the blissful state. That was your idea. <laughs> so for blissful, just to keep myself always in the blissful state, what I have to do is to do some meditation. Yeah. So whenever we have to be in the, in the blissful state, naturally we have to do some meditation. So if you do proper meditation, naturally it will lead to the permanent uh, bliss consciousness. Right. So I, in, in this way also I tried. So <coughs> certain times the bliss consciousness may last for hours together, uh, one hour, two hours, three hours. Sometimes it may last for uh, days together, one day, two days or three days or fifteen days. But, once, uh, but I have the intention that if, if it is uh, lasting for ever, then I, I can declare that <laughs> I am all right. right. So, but uh, but once it happened like this, uh, the, uh, I cannot be free from your bliss consciousness. So, the bliss consciousness came to me has not go away from me. So, I was permanently with my, the bliss consciousness. So then only I know the problem of bliss consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it slowly affect the health of my body. Mm -hmm. So then only I doubt. So if it is real, if it is worth attaining, how can it destroy the health of our body? Mm -hmm. So it must it must give health health to our body. Instead of giving health to our body, 
how we capable of destroying the health of the body. So I doubt the status of the police consciousness is so. Then only I come to understand. So the enlightenment liberation is not at all an experience. So, so when I come to a conclusion, then it is a, not an experience. And when I realize what is the enlightenment, what is liberation, then only uh, whenever, wherever I look, all the masters are saying the same thing. <laughs> Before that, I have also idea. You, every masters are also interested upon creating some bliss conversation for everyone. I, I also thought like that. And when I thought like that, I have the teachings of many masters that they are also. Uh, longing for that. They are also addressing uh, permanent bliss consciousness. Right. But after <coughs> my uh, understanding alone, when I looked here and there, every master surrounding us <laughs> using the same word that we have to go beyond uh, experience. The enlightenment liberation is not at all an experience. <laughs> it is free from all experience. Free from all. So we really do see only our mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our concepts. Because because Nizargadatta used to say he was he's a bit different because like I said many teachers say there's no relationship between the yeah. liberation and yeah. and the process of sadhana and yet Nizargadatta he says that um, that you do he emphasizes meditation as you know and uh, and he says the fruit ripens slowly but it drops suddenly so he's making some relationship there that the sadhana does have some importance yeah. as a ripening process. So the, in the last session, we are going to criticize the masters. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> because the, many masters are doing many wrong things. Yeah. So that is the uh, what is, that is the cause of our problem. <laughs> So that we are going to deal with in the last session. Okay. That is the confirmation session. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they, are the, they are not doing it consciously. Unconsciously they are doing so many mistakes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to ask you was about different types of meditation. Mm -hmm. Because there's, there's the one type of meditation that many people at one time have known about where you just put your attention on one object and you keep your attention focused on that object so it's single pointed, like a candle or a deity or a flower, whatever it may be. Just keep your attention focused on that one object and that can create a, a type of samadhi over a period of time. Then the other type of meditation isn't that at all, it's more like a vipassana or a witnessing type of meditation. And it seems that the results of those two are very different. But here, the main thing is that, for example, uh, you are looking at the uh, flower. Uh, so with, 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 uh, with focus of attention, you are looking at the flower. And you are focusing your consciousness there. Mm -hmm. The consciousness is focusing there. And when you are focusing your consciousness, you remove the flower from here. Then what will happen to the consciousness? The consciousness will be there, but without any object. Right. For example, you have some torch light, you know torch light. Yeah. And you focus the torch light to some object in the night. You can see the some object uh, through the beam of the torch. You can see some object in the dark. But at the same time, you can so look, uh, focus the torch here and some there. And afterwards, you focus the torch to the sky. Can you see any object? Yeah. But some beam is there. The beam, beyond the beam, the beam is there. The so the beam is the consciousness. Yeah. So here, all meditation is to keep you in the consciousness without any object. So, for the, for the time being, you may select some object. For afterwards, you have to be in the consciousness itself, right. without any object. Mm -hmm. Those, the consciousness itself is the subject, the consciousness itself is the object. So, the subject and the object is consciousness itself. Mm -hmm. So, that is the meditation. Mm -hmm. 
that's the final stage of meditation. Right. The beginning we can focus any attention, focus our attention to the thought, so the gap between thought or serve something, some some focusing point of our chakras or any, any part of anything, that may be different. But the main thing is that uh, we have to be in the attentive state, not without any object. Yes. Without, uh, no object must be there, some attention must be there. Keeping our consciousness without any focusing point. Mm. So keeping our consciousness in a waking state, so that is, the, the pure consciousness is the sleep state or the anandamaya kosa. When you keep the uh, consciousness without any object, that we are activating the another mind also in the waking state itself. Mm -hmm. And there are many kinds of meditation, but the, the core substance, the central point is keeping your consciousness without any object. Mm -hmm. That is the central point in all meditations. Mm -hmm. But if you are focusing <coughs> meditation uh, in certain points, in chakras, that, that we are creating some activity, some energy, and thereby you can create some uh, some special kind of sensation, special kind of powers. Right. So yeah. that is a, that is different. Yeah. But with pure meditation, uh, the nirvana samadhi state or uh, nirvana samadhi or anything, that is keeping your consciousness alone without any object. Without an uh, object of uh, meditation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That is the real meditation. Right. Yeah. So do you have any comments on that, or will you talk more about that later, about the the uh, validity? of objectless meditation, because that in a way is what Bhagwan was teaching, is objectless meditation. Mm -hmm. That's the goal of it. Well, and it really the usefulness. Pardon? You should use the word validity, but when it... Or well, the usefulness, usefulness is good. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see any usefulness in that yeah. objectless meditation? So, you know, we have to start with the, some object. Right. Then only we can remove the object itself. Right. Then uh, afterwards, we can... Uh, our conscious has to look into the conscious itself. So, uh, the beginning and the end is consciousness. It's everything related to Ananda Maikosha. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The, the consciousness itself, Ananda Maikosha. Yes, and observing the consciousness, yeah. Ananda Maikosha. But in our sleep, <coughs> it is there without any direction, without any focusing point. <coughs> but in our waking state, we use our consciousness with some focusing point. So we take it as uh, the waking state. The basically, the consciousness is same. Both in waking state, both in dream state, both in sleep state, the consciousness is same. But in the dream, the sleep, there is no focusing point. There is no object to be seen. So the meditation, correct me if I'm wrong, when we get into this state, the object, when we get to the goal of meditation, of being in this objectless meditation, it's still not mononasa because we're keeping, mm -hmm. yeah. the active word there is we're keeping, and what you're talking about is freedom without keeping. Yeah, but all working, whatever may be, uh, you, we may give even a polite name, but even uh, yeah, understanding, even enlightenment is a kind of monolaya. Uh, even, yes. even enlightenment is monolaya. Only liberation alone is monolaya. Yeah. <coughs> but, uh, but the enlightenment is a great thing. Uh, meditation, everything is a great thing, good thing. But at the same time, everything is monolaya. Without, but, but we should not uh, uh, undergrade, we, can, we cannot uh, degrade Manolaya. Everything is Manolaya is good, but the next moment is, uh, must be free from Manolaya, that is the thing. So we can use, make use of the Manolaya. Manolaya is good in itself. It is not good and bad, but uh, in how we take it, uh, without Manolaya we cannot live. Uh, we cannot be uh, all our enlightenment, all our discussion, all our meditation, everything is Manolaya. We, we, all our doings are in the form of Manolaya. But the main thing is that we have to free from Manolaya, that is the liberation. I want to expand on what you were saying for myself. In meditation, mm -hmm. um, you said consciousness becomes aware of consciousness. Mm -hmm. The object disappears mm -hmm. and consciousness becomes aware of consciousness. So consciousness is both object and subject. Object and subject. In that space, when you are there, there is an expansion that happens. There's a feeling of expansion. Yeah. And in that expansion, thoughts 
whatever they may be, thoughts become very small. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if this room is this big, and in deep meditation, the room becomes 10 times this size, and the objects in the room stay the same size. Mm -hmm. But the space becomes very large. Mm -hmm. right? So the thoughts become inconsequential. They're not important. They come, you can see that it's almost like balloons bouncing around. They have no, they have no, they have no impact on you. They come and go. Then after you finish meditating, let's say for 30 minutes or one hour, this state continues for some time. If I do this, say twice a day, will it not lead to a state where I can be in that natural state of watching thoughts flow? Exactly what you were describing, which is that I don't interfere with thoughts. That non-interference of thought flow, whatever it may be, it comes, it goes. That space when it is created, does it not help us? in allowing these to see and not be attached to those thoughts. Then they come, they come, they come like you said in one of your books of like it's like smoke coming from incense. Like Agarbati and Udrabati and Pogavaramari. Is smoke coming out like that? We are in a state where we allow it doesn't affect us. Does it not help you in training? So you do think helps. But at the same time you have to give up even that for example because Whenever we are doing, we are maintaining something like this, some effort is needed. So here we have to, in the final stage, we have to be without any effort. So no iota of effort is necessary. So we have to free from all effort. So whenever the effort comes, we select something. So all selection, because if we select, we will select the good thing alone. So that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> if you are able to select the bad thing, that doesn't matter. <laughs> but we select only the good thing. We will uh, we'll, we'll select the pleasant thing. If you are able to, uh, so if you are able to select the unwanted thing, <laughs> then yeah, the okay. okay. But that's the problem. And for those who are sitting here, the word we have to <laughs> is the is like the trick. Because you're still, you're, even you are still saying we have to get into. So, we have to mix us like this, otherwise yeah. we cannot have any understanding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have, here also, uh, we should not select anything. This, guy, this understanding is also a kind of selection that we should not select anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, the word, we have to use the word like this. <laughs> that is a limitation of language. language. It's a limitation. So that back to his description. So when 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 the meditation is, pro is progressed like that, where where the space is just vast, vast, vast space, and uh, and the thoughts are coming and going, but they have no real solidity to them within that space. What is that space? Is that space itself still an expression of the underlying reality, or is that space? Space is that space that you mentioned, the vastness itself. What do you hear? Well, the space is uh, giving, getting importance. Is that uh, that means we have to uh, flee from object. So yeah. the, when we give importance to the space, means flee from the object. So between the object, space is there. So that is right. the reason for giving uh, importance to the space. Actually, you if you if you look into the space, then you create the space itself as an object. That's you true. take that's the, that's the, the problem, space yeah. itself as an object. So mm -hmm. we should not be. We should be without any object. We must be without any object. Right. So that means uh, object means manolaya. So all manolaya, we should not give importance to manolaya. Right. That is the main thing behind that. So the, the, actually, the basic thing is not the space. The basic thing is the sensitivity. The sensitivity we cannot imagine, we cannot connect with space. Uh, space is, we, we define space, but we cannot define the pure sensitivity. Right. Right. So space also arising out of that. This feeling of <laughs> yeah. space is also yeah. arising, Everything is, uh, arising out of that. Is arising out of that. <coughs> and yet the space seems uncreated. It's uncreated. But here, the, the, the importance of space is that we should not give importance to the object. Yes. That is the main thing. That's the importance of that's the space. The, that's yeah. the importance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Because in, in some ways, it, it's like the state of deep sleep. If you could be in a state of, not as a state, but as a stateless state, in deep sleep, in the waking life, is that what you're talking about? In a so sense, it is, it is in, medita in the meditation, you are in the, once again in the, even though you are waking, you are sleeping. <coughs> You are sleeping, while you are sleeping, but at the same time you are waking. That is the state of meditation. Yeah. Right. But the natural state, I mean, because I think when he was talking about the natural state. The natural state is the, a, a, a stateless state, in a sense. Because it's not state. something, it's a stateless state. Stateless state means. Not created. Stateless state means everything is part of the stateless state. <laughs> because Whatever comes, it is a state, but the next moment it is not a state. Right, so, so that is a state of sleep. Right. So, but the state of deep sleep is where there's no awareness of object yeah, yeah. and no awareness of subject. Mm. So, if in the waking state, can we be like that? Is, that, is what you're talking about, allowing yes. the free flow, being as if. So, we need, asleep, not, we need not be in the sleep state, we need not be in the Ananda Megosa. Whenever the freedom is not related to the Ananda Maikosa. Mm -hmm. So it related to everything. Even the consciousness may be part, our thinking may be part, our struggling may be part, our even the bliss consciousness may be take the part. So everything is part. It is the part, it is the it is the whole of the world. It is, but we're not doing anything about it. Like in that state, we're just allowing the free flow. So, or not even allowing the free flow. Not it's allowing, there. but it yeah. is happening. Some happening is there. Whatever happening in ourselves is in the free flow. There is no, nobody to allow anything. Right, yeah. <laughs> the person who is allowing must be in the flow. <laughs> <laughs> he should not keep himself in the bank of the river <laughs> to, yeah, allow the river, the free to allow the river. <laughs> <laughs> he must be he must be all, he must be also in the river. There yeah. should not be any bank right. <laughs> yeah. to contain the river. In, in, in your teaching, when we are saying that uh, there is flow, we are, mm -hmm. we are part of the flow. And I, yesterday also I used the word allow, and mm -hmm. you said no, no allow. Mm -hmm. But in some way, is this teaching not saying? that there is some sense of allowing, because I must not interfere. No, not no. interfere is to allow, is it not? Yeah, so I'm saying I'm not interfering. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, because of the teaching, I'm saying from the yeah, yeah. teaching point of view. Because the, the words are, anyhow we have to well, we have use the words, we have to use Manalaya, yes. but uh, with the help of Manalaya, we are trying to understand Manalasa. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And the key is, the key is going back to helplessness. We spoke about Manalaya, Mananasa. Uh, actually, Mananasa is a conception of Manalaya. Actually, there is no Mananasa. So, even liberation is a part of Manalaya. So, there is no such thing as Mananasa itself. That's a good point. So, there is a flowing of Manalaya. Ah, that's all. Right. comes and goes. Yeah, that's it. That is that's monolaya. That is lubricated flow of monolaya <coughs> is liberation. Yeah. So there is nothing like mononasa or uh, uh, getting out of it. Only monolaya is there. Monolaya. Now it is friction to monolaya. Now uh, when liberation is it's a lubricated flow okay. of monolaya. <laughs> Because cannot be two state, two, two expressions for something. <coughs> so, just flowing manolaya. So, we, we can know only manolaya and without manolaya. Mm -hmm. So, the, the moment of manolaya, mean manolaya comes and disappears. Mm -hmm. So, that alone is there. <coughs> but when we keep in um, keep manolaya, the problem is in the manolaya. Mm -hmm. And the liberation is also the free flow of manolaya. Because the mind cannot uh, know the unknown. So the, whatever it says, the unknown is part of the known. No. Yes. So something conscious, uh, third state, fourth state, everything is a part of mind.
I noticed that in your following on from what you just said, in your teaching you don't mention the word heart. And I think we all I certainly have an experience that is I don't know how I would ever describe it. But I, I, I would, I'm, I'm happy to use the word heart to, de, to try to attempt to describe a feeling that is not quite in the mind, but it's still, and I notice that you don't, a lot of masters use the word heart, bring, it, bring the mind into the heart, that kind of, I notice you don't uh, use that. Is there any reason that you don't choose to we haven't had any discussions about what the heart is, whether the heart is the self, can we actually feel the heart? That's a, a topic that you don't choose to go to. Is there any reason? Heart. 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 So many people use the word heart for consciousness. They use the word heart for consciousness. Mm -hmm. Instead of uh, using the word consciousness, they use the word heart. Thought and uh, feeling. Consciousness is heart, and the thought is mind. They use the like this. Mm. the intellect uh, and. Uh, activating the Ananda Mekosa or activating the sleep state in the waking state. So the activating the sleep state in the waking state is the meditation. So for the whenever you are in the meditation, whenever you are in the activation of the bliss consciousness, you can feel safe. So you are you can feel you are free from the turmoil of the world. You can feel from the worries of the world. So it is the time being, it will be all clear, all right. But here, whenever you are aware that you are in this, <coughs> so this is known as the Savikalpa Samadhi. So it is also a Samadhi state. Uh, the, whenever we are in conscious of this consciousness, <coughs> that we are there, it is known as Savikalpa Samadhi or Savija Samadhi, whatever it may be. But whenever you are going to Nirvikalpa Samadhi, that is once again we are in the deep sleep. But uh, when you are in the Sarikalpa Samadhi or Sarija Samadhi as just like this, as they have uh, some good feeling, some, uh, some bliss consciousness. So the, the, the bliss consciousness is, the quality of the bliss consciousness is very low, it will not affect you. But the bliss consciousness taken more strength, it will affect the nervous system. So, if you are in the bliss consciousness, you have to keep it in a low standard. So, the it is in the low standard, it will not affect you. So, if the standard of the bliss consciousness uh, in the full swing, so the full swing, it will affect the nervous system. But at the same time, whenever you are going to the Nirvayupa Samadhi, Nirvayupa Samadhi, because it will not, we are unaware of that. Another of the bliss consciousness is so we know we are 
there, but we will learn on another of that. It is just like a sleep. And in sleep also we are in the bliss consciousness, but it, it, it helps the health of the body. But at the same time, the conscious feeling, the conscious feeling of uh, the bliss consciousness alone, if it is in the minimum level, it helps for our health. But if it, uh, it exceeds the uh, minimum level, it may destroy the, uh, some function of our body. So. so, for the time being, it will be helpful. But here, all meditation, there are many kind of meditation. Some meditation, somebody is doing meditation for some uh, getting some powers, some experience. For that, for the meditation, you may get some. There are many kind of yoga, many kind of practices. Some kriya yoga. For kriya yoga and everything, to get some power or get some special kind of knowledge, some special kind of sensitivity. So that is uh, there is a different. There are many kind of methods, many kind of practice to get some power and something. But here. It, it is also possible to you can have some special kind of vision, special kind of uh, power, special kind of sensitivity. Everything is possible. But the but when when we compare <coughs> liberation and enlightenment, it it may for the till we reach the thing, it may be a tremendous one. But when we reach the thing, you will feel. Why should we waste my time for this? You will come, you will come to the conclusion like this. For example, <coughs> one person, uh, his uh, brother is living at uh, Chennai, and the one, one, his brother, the, the, uh, the other person is uh, living. I think he is in the US, and he is uh, having some. He is doing some practice of yoga and meditation. That he the the interest he is he wants to have through meditation and yoga is that he wants to know the future what must what will what will be there in the future of his life so he tried for twelve years he he done many practices many yoga and thereby and after the end of twelve years he succeeded in his practice so now he is able to. Look at look up, look at his future. What will happen to himself or anybody in the future? So, so whenever he reach the because he had tried that for the state for twelve years. So after getting success in the in his career, he phoned his brother at Chennai. So I mistakenly <laughs> come to this kind of state. Please don't try anybody <laughs> this state because I am uh, seriously in problem. <laughs> I am facing many problems because all because the present problem is very much. The future problem is too much. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. Uh, I cannot imagine the future problem. I cannot face the future problem. I am in terrible, <laughs> terrible condition. Please don't try this method. <laughs> Uh, please take this as a warning. <laughs> don't uh, try this mother. Don't try this mother. So he is like this. So this is the case of this special power. So when we uh, till we are getting such a special power, it may be some enthusiasm. We may feel some enthusiasm. Feel we may have some interest upon those things. But when we reach the thing, it will, we will feel it is a useless for him. Not only useless, it will it will give some problem. It will be a nuisance. You will feel it is a nuisance. So there are many many cases. <laughs> you need not explain much. Uh, and uh, and if you have any 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 clarification in this aspect of meditation, because everybody is doing meditation, everybody has some knowledge about meditation. <coughs> And if you have any clarification, have any discussion with related to meditation and yoga, uh, we can uh, discuss. And after this discussion, we can once again go to the monkey medicine <laughs> story. <laughs> Sometimes.
Um, uh, one time you said it was a maintained state. Mm. But another time you said it's the full mananasa, full uh, flowing state. Uh, usually they speak of Saja Samadhi and Jiva Muti um, as, as a free flowing state. <coughs> oh, so here, the Samadhi, all Samadhi, even some Sagaja Samadhi or the river for Samadhi, everything is a maintained state. Really? It is not a natural state. Mm -hmm. so you are, our work is there. So without our work, without our will, because it is not necessary. When the liberation is concerned, we have to give freedom to everything. Where Sagaja Samadhi is maybe there, but, to, but we are not maintaining it. If it is if it, the, 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 some natural Sagaja Samadhi may be there, doesn't matter. But we should not maintain it. Even in the case of Musayaji Samadhi or Nirupi, whatever it may be, uh, even as a liberated person may, for time being, they may enter into Sagaji Samadhi or Nirupi Samadhi so. Without his willingness, without his effort, he may go either go, but uh, it is not against liberation. He may either Nirupi Samadhi, Sagaji Samadhi or in, as an ordinary person, whatever it may be, but, but he, is not, he is not doing any work consciously in his psychological world. So that alone is the thing. Everything must be in the natural way. In the natural way, everything may happen. Even Sagaja Samadhi may happen, Nirvirpa Samadhi may happen, or no Samadhi may not happen. Everything, nothing may not happen. Everything may happen, everything may not happen. Everything is one. 